you think we'll ever have a gay rapper? I believe there are some gay rappers that just ain't came out the closet. Well, then, then we don't know that they're gay. Do exactly. you think? If you think a rap, a big rap, would have to be a big star to come out? Well, Frank Ocean came out as an R&B singer, you know, and he was big. He was on the incline, and you know, a lot of people accepted him and appreciated him for being, you know, a stand-up guy to say that he was. You know, Puff is making jokes about how they used to wrestle for the Frosted Flakes in the morning, and yeah, I bet they did. You know, <laughs> somebody frosted you know, some. Somebody frosted some- Snoop Dogg has recently shared some intriguing insights about Diddy's infamous celebrity parties. In a video, he dives deep into the world of these exclusive events, revealing dark secrets that go beyond the glamorous facade. From substance use to mistreating, it seems Diddy's parties are anything but ordinary. Many rappers reportedly feel terrified to attend. Snoop Dogg has expressed varying views on homo rappers in hip-hop. In 2012, he optimistically stated that the world was ready for an openly homo rapper, emphasizing changing times and acceptance. Snoop Dogg has been highlighting Diddy's case and raising awareness through veiled words. He persists in exposing Diddy in various podcasts and events whenever he finds the opportunity to do so. You think we'll ever have a gay rapper? I believe there are some gay rappers. Oh, they just ain't came out the closet. Well, I believe rapid is a little bit different because it comes from a culture where, you know, that's not accepted. But as time moves on, everybody accepts everybody. And I feel like there will be an acceptance of it. It's just a matter of who will be, you know, the first one to come out of the closet. So be I have no, you know, control over what people think or feel. You know, do what makes you happy. Napoleon recently shared his thoughts on Snoop Dogg and Diddy in a podcast by The Art of Dialogue. The discussion revolved around Snoop Dogg's interactions with Diddy after Tupac's passing and his appearance on the Steve Harvey show. Check out this audio from Suge Knight. It's from his podcast with Dave Mays and he's speaking on, you know, Tupac and Snoop being cool and how, you know, after Tupac got killed, Snoop started hanging out with Diddy. And, you know, he also speaks on how, you know, Snoop, he did the Steve Harvey show with Diddy after Tupac got killed. Check this out. Okay. Let's download it right now. Then you look at the scenario how everybody used pot to make their stuff famous or make their project better. You got people who use their songs with pot and tell them how much they love pot, but they do songs with coffee. You got Steve Harvey, old big dad, you know, this motherfucker telling them, well, fuck pot, according to everybody else. He brings um, Snoop and Puffy on there and say, these are dudes who running this in the East Coast, West Coast. What's up, Snoop? What's up, huh? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, wait a minute, fellas here. Hold up. You know, I know all about this East Coast, West Coast rivalry thing here, but we in Chicago now. This rivalry stuff, we got to stop it, man. We stop that. We stop a lot of this violence. Yo, Steve, check this, man. All that East Coast, West Coast stuff is a bunch of media hype. It's been my dog from day one, you know what I'm saying? It's all good between me and him. That's my people's. For real, that's what we came in for. We came in and lighted up and lighted up. We made me shit happen. Now, Pac, if you love Pac so much, how you with the motherfucker that everybody say got something to do with the first get down that happened to Pac in New York? Then the second one. Allegations have surfaced, suggesting that Snoop Dogg and Diddy frequented each other's company in the aftermath of Tupac Shakur's passing. Reports allege that Snoop Dogg and Diddy were seen together on multiple occasions, sparking speculation about their relationship and intentions during this sensitive time in hip-hop history. Critics and observers alike have scrutinized their interactions, questioning the nature of their alliance and the implications it may have had within the rap community. What you think about Shug comments? And I've never asked you this before, but did you have an issue with Snoop hanging out with Diddy after Tupac got killed? I, I always, I can, I, I mean, I always felt that was wrong. I'm gonna just keep it real. I'm talking about from that, like now, okay. You know what I mean? I'm 46, Snoop probably early 50, 50s. If he figured out now, he he might go by the opinion that, like, okay, Puffy had nothing to do with Pac. You know, we grown now. If he wanna be his friend, no problem. But back then that was just awkward. You know what I mean? And the reason why it was awkward to me that I never even like like it because you knew how Pop felt about this individual. You know what I mean? Even if you don't agree with him, you probably could have said, you know what, I, I probably ain't gonna come out, you know, uh, publicly with this because until things clear up, so I really know I could be certain that, you know, they didn't have nothing to do with Pop, but it's like, it was no, you know, okay, it is what it is. So that, that, that I never really respected that back then. So you had an issue with it, you didn't like it. 
never really liked it. It just was a strange look because you was Pac boy. You know what I mean? Puffy, you know, you, it, it's clear they had some issues with Pac. And Pac died and all of a sudden you chilling with Puffy. Back then it just, okay, now you can say you can say what you want. You go, all grandfathers, I guess. You know what I mean? That's different now. But back then I think it was, a, it, it was, um, it was, it was weird. It was tasteless. You know what I mean? It didn't seem like you really had that much love for Pac. You could have just, you know what I mean? Unless he pressured them or like questioned Puffy, like, yo, what's up with this? What's up with that? Then you could say, you know what I mean? No problem. Like somebody said, okay, I'm talk like I, 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 like I, I believe somebody mentioned that they seen a video with me and the dude Prodigy or one of the dudes from my deep as if I was with, they don't know the backdrop of that. So I went to his hotel room ready to fight. Like, bro, I fight all, everybody in that room one-on-one. -on -one. Even if I lose, it doesn't matter. The outlaws was with me. My homie Tiny, the Mexican homie was with me. I didn't go there and say, let me get in a video with these guys. I went there knocking on their door, doom, doom, doom. Tell them dudes to come out. What's up with your, what, what's up with your and Pac? You, you got a problem with Pac? Cause we could just fight like man to man, face to face, and then shake hands. That's why, I, that's, that was my approach with them. Jaguar Wright's recent statements about the close relationship between Diddy and Snoop Dogg have sparked allegations suggesting their potential involvement in Tupac Shakur's untimely demise. According to Wright, Snoop Dogg is now leveraging his platform to shift blame onto Diddy, portraying himself as innocent in the process. Wright's claims have ignited a firestorm of speculation and debate within the hip-hop community, with many questioning the true nature of their relationships and the events surrounding Tupac's case. I swear, man, this game never ceases to amaze me. So this young lady, Miss Jaguar Wright, if you guys are not familiar, she just dropped some more bombs on us, you hear me? So she was talking about how Snoop potentially, and all of this is allegedly, how Snoop and Puff been secretly moving people out the way for years. So it seems like the Puff and Snoop relationship runs much deeper than we all think or so that we all thought. Honestly, these accusations that Jaguar Wright is making right now blows my mind, but it also makes me think. Yeah, check it out. I never wanted to believe it. You hear whispers throughout the years and you think that people are, and, and Snoop and all, I have always had a decent report. But Snoop, Snoop got some answering to do. Because if you were capable of doing what they're saying that you did to Tupac, why the f Allegations suggest that Snoop Dogg's loyalty lies with Diddy over Biggie Smalls, possibly due to his close association and involvement with Diddy. This claim implies that personal connections and collaborations may have influenced Snoop Dogg's choices within the music industry. I said I want to do a song with them niggas. That's how I ended. I said I ain't got no issues with Puffy and Biggie in New York <laughs> on Hot 97. Why the fuck did you say Because that? that's how I felt. <laughs> they tried to get me to not like Puffy and Biggie while we was in the middle of the death row bad boy feud. And I, I made a choice that I had no issues with them. That was the Angie Martinez interview back in the days that created havoc between me and death row because motherfuckers didn't understand that I had enough sense to know that I had just beat a murder case. Now you want me to get in another one? Mm. While I'm in New York with no guns? I'm from the hood, I gang bang, so I understand street politics. I know beach. there's gang bangers everywhere. Yes. We ain't the toughest niggas in the world, it's a tough nigga on every block. So when you try to be too tough, that's when your ass get checked. Preach! Snoop Dogg has reportedly explained that Kim, Diddy's ex-wife, desired for Diddy to maintain contact with him, even leaving her child at Snoop's house. This narrative suggests a complex relationship dynamic where familial ties and personal connections intertwine within the entertainment industry. It raises questions about the boundaries and responsibilities in such relationships, highlighting the nuances of interpersonal connections amidst the backdrop of celebrity life. Just so you know, Aunt, Puffy's sons and my sons have been best friends since they were six, seven years old. Noise for me. I didn't make it happen and Puffy didn't make it happen. One night I was at my house and Puffy's son was over about like nine o'clock. And I'm like, Cut, what time are you going home? And he like, I'm spending the night. Uh. I'm like, did you tell your dad? He like, nah, my mom dropped me off. So Kim, rest in peace, was peace. connecting my kids with Puff kids, and they formed a friendship and a bond. When Justin went to UCLA, my son went to UCLA. When, when Christian was rapping, my son was rapping. When he was modeling, they was flying over the world together. So they forged a friendship and a brotherhood 
that me and Puff always had. So if we got the opportunity to take these two brands and show people what it can be as opposed to what it used to be, right. that's what- Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre have purportedly issued warnings to Diddy, although the specifics of these warnings remain unspecified. These alleged admonitions suggest a potential friction or concern within the music industry, hinting at underlying tensions or disagreements between these influential figures. Such incidents often fuel speculation and interest within the media and among fans, reflecting the intricate dynamics and rivalries that can exist within the world of hip hop. I like when you like this, Daddy. Daddy, I like when you're scrambling and scraping. Or scrambling and scraping. Oh, God damn it. I'm in. Well, I, look at you miss me. Where I became. Did you miss me, though? For real. Because she's scrambling and scraping. I like when you're scrambling and scraping. He likes when Fab is scrambling and scraping. The nigga sitting at a table eating cake. Me, Tyrese. Ray J and Ronaldo, for real, Yo, I need to know who fucks with me, you know? Like, just straight up, like, like I don't have the time. You know, if you fuck with me... Like Snoop and Diddy have reportedly discussed how they influence each other to smoke cigars. This conversation suggests a mutual enjoyment of cigars between the two, reflecting a shared pastime and possibly a bonding ritual within their connection. It shows the closeness of two music moguls. <laughs> hey, yo! You know the crazy, the, the crazy part is, I, I know, I know this would sound like, you know, I'm making it up. But remember the day you and Wiz taught me how to smoke? Right. When I first moved to LA? Right. And I told y'all like I always went. You wouldn't do it the right way. You wouldn't in it. I, I didn't do it the right way. And this crazy shit was like I had, had seen so much shit. But when I inhaled, I saw shit I never saw. I want to thank you and Wills for teaching me how to smoke, man. Hey, yo, 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 and, and, and an OG once told me, the best advice I can give you, leave the party while it's hot. So I'm out of here. I love you, my nigga. Dang. Love. Don't get no realer than that right there. A real check-in, you understand me? A check-in from a boss. What I agree in the background. Snoop Dogg and Diddy have been seen traveling together in the same car, sparking interest and speculation among fans and the media. This joint transportation suggests a close relationship or collaborative effort between the two influential figures in the music industry. I said, I want to do a song with them niggas. That's how I ended. I said, I ain't got no issues with Puffy and Big in New York <laughs> on Hot 97. Why the fuck did you say that? Because that's how I felt. <laughs> they tried to get me to not like Puffy and Biggie while we was in the middle of the death row bad boy feud. And I, I made a choice that I had no issues with them. That was the Angie Martinez interview back in the days that created havoc between me and death row because motherfuckers didn't understand that I had enough sense to know that I had just beat a murder case. Now you want me to get in another one? Mm. While I'm in New York with no guns? I'm from the hood, I gang bang, so I understand street politics. And I know there's gang bangers everywhere. Yes. We ain't the toughest niggas in the world, it's a tough nigga on every block. So when you try to be too tough, that's when your ass get checked. Preach! Preach! There have been allegations circulating about leaked footage allegedly showing Diddy with Meek Mill. This purported footage has sparked interest and speculation within the media and among fans, raising questions about the nature of their relationship and any potential collaborations or interactions between the two artists. They had a recording of Meek and Diddy making love. Uh, I don't know if it was love. Got okay, you have it? Let's hear it. Oh, 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 oh. What? Yo, wait a minute. Wait, ah! you didn't hear this? No. Now, Mir Miran, wait, yeah. what does that sound authentic? It, play, play it absolutely. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, just really give it a good listen. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's. I'm People want to make it. They want to make it so badly. You get mm. these vulnerable people. Parents are letting you do this because they want to make it so badly. Yeah. And then you record them probably and say, if you do anything, we got this on you. Jaguar Wright and Gene Deal have been discussing various allegations against Diddy on The Art of Dialogue. Gene Deal, who used to be Diddy's bodyguard, 
has shared several stories and accusations about Diddy's behavior and actions in the music industry. Jaguar Wright, a singer known for being outspoken, has also talked about her experiences and observations. These discussions have generated a lot of interest and controversy, as both Wright and Deal provide insider perspectives on the industry and Diddy's role in it. If Diddy has to worry about anybody, it would have to be these two people. This is my girl Jaguar, right? And this is ex bad boy security Gene Deal. Okay. These two people have had the most to say about Diddy when it, when it comes to all the allegations and everything that is coming out right now. Jaguar Wright has actually been speaking on Diddy and his actions for years. Gene has recently come out and has been speaking on things that happened with Big, things that happened with Puff, things that happened with Pac. I'm talking about giving very, very detailed inside information. I get a lot of flack for just telling the truth. And the truth is the only thing I would say that we're doing is just being accountable for what we saw and being accountable for the hell it started. And like I told these guys now, people who commit crimes commit crimes with criminals. Yeah, they do. I ain't never been no criminal. No. And I'm never, I'm never going to let anybody get harmed. I'm always intersecting. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, ten, I'm, I'm 10 steps in front of you before it happens. You don't walk away. Gene Deal has made some eye-catching claims about Diddy, including stories about parties involving undressed men. He has shared these allegations in various interviews, including on platforms like The Art of Dialogue and YouTube. These discussions have added to the controversy surrounding Diddy, as Deal provides a perspective from his time working closely with him. But naked guys, you know, uh, uh, Corey, Wolf, and L. That was a crew called Butt Naked. You know what I'm saying? He got with them. They they did they gave parties, bro. Yeah, no, I, no, I'm just, yeah. bro. I, I'm not tripping on. You know, we have some crazy names back here. Like they would be like in Dallas, it'll be like Smash Head and Pumpkin Boy. It just, I just, the, the names that op, like old school or like OGs yeah. used to have back in the day just. I yeah, always it was Butt out. Naked, and they and they they logo a booty ain't a booty unless it's Butt Naked. Amen. All right. <laughs> nah, for real. So now he got money, gave Puff and everything like that. He went up to ask Puff for a lazy money like that. Now I could have just gave him that money I had in Puff in my pocket because Puff had completely all about it, forgot all about it. Never asked me the two weeks he was back in town and nothing like that because I only had Puff on weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. When I get off work on Friday, you understand they'll call. There have been various allegations involving Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Diddy, often stemming from their time in the music industry. Some of these claims have been made by individuals like Sue Knight, who has suggested that they are part of a secret society. This shows that Snoop is also involved with Diddy, and now he is exposing Diddy just to appear innocent so that no one would suspect him. His involvement in Tupac's murder, suspiciously, you know what I mean? Like. Tupac was talking about Dr. Dre yeah. getting into shenanigans. So who knows? Yeah. Him and Puff Daddy are good mates. They've always been close. Just look at it. Yeah. Uh, Snoop, game got pushed out. Maybe game stopped dobbing. Yeah. And then like he liked it at the start, then stopped. But these are all guys that I fucking listen to, man. Yeah, Except yeah, for yeah. P. Diddy, I don't listen to his shit. Jaguar Wright has made statements suggesting that Snoop Dogg is the next to face allegations similar to those against Diddy. This adds to the ongoing discussions and controversies involving various figures in the music industry. It was like, Warren starts talking about the day Pac got shot. And he wasn't going to the fight, so he had a fight party at his crib or whatever. And he had invited Snoop and he said Snoop had turned him down weeks before the fight because he said he was going. And um, for whatever reason, Snoop decided not to go to the fight with Suge and Pac, which is crazy. Um, demanded that neither Daz nor Corrupt tag along. And all of a sudden just popped up at Warren G's house unannounced. Like, hey, I changed my mind. I'm here for the party. And he said he kept noticing that he had just like, you know, those, remember those next tail chirpers? Yep. Yeah. That could work from state to state. Yep. Well, he said Snoop had one. And he was talking on it on and off the whole day. And then he said the damn the thing. He said, 
Snoop got hit up on the joint when Pac got shot before it hit the news. Moreover, Wright has made several claims about Diddy's methods of control within the music industry. She alleges that Diddy uses manipulation and intimidation to maintain power over artists and others in his circle. He said, the objective of Bad Boy is to kill talent. We don't want talented motherfuckers at Bad Boy. Talented motherfuckers think they got to say. Oh, a talented motherfucker will tell you, I'm going to turn in my album when I feel like it. He said, but see, if we get people with no talent, and then we make them look like stars. See, we have total control. Because without us, they can't be the shit. Oh. He said, that's how we're going to run this label. And we're going to run these motherfuckers into the ground. And I'm going to make all of you rich. And that was his fucking pep talk at the Kit Kat Club in 1996 to his interns who are now mostly um, executives. You know, executives at Bad Boy. So that explains making the band, bringing the unknowns. Not Wright has also claimed that Diddy is the homo thug referenced by Wendy Williams in her past discussions. These statements are part of a broader set of allegations and controversies surrounding Diddy, which have been widely discussed in the media. The first woman to uncover the homo thugs. She talking about Diddy. That's what these download bitches was called when Wendy first started talking about it in the 90s, the homo thug. So you hear about stories of Diddy like shooting people, yeah. blowing up cars. Yeah. Is he this gangster that behind the scenes that ever, is that him or is that Shout out to Wendy Williams. That's it for today's video. Stay tuned until next time.